Before I jump into this, let me start off with a little bit of a disclaimer. I started writing this rant as a joke, but I think I might have convinced myself of the argument. I'm not really sure anymore. So let me start off by asking you, what should you call the whole family of models like BERT and GPT and all of this other Michigas that's in the news these days. People naturally want to have a general name for these things since they use common components and are trained in similar ways and then are applied in similar ways to similar tasks. Ask somebody at Stanford, they'd tell you that they should be called foundation models. They came up with this name right as they built a center with, funnily enough, foundation in the name. I personally don't like the name foundation models for the following reasons. One, it's kind of self-serving, and two, it implies you should be building on this foundation. And I'm not sure that that is correct. People were calling them large language models before, so why can't we just stick with that name? Well, we don't necessarily want them to be large, and they're not just being used on language. These models are getting run more and more on visual, chemical, and who knows what else. So language models don't really work, and again, they shouldn't necessarily be as large as possible. So if foundation models and large language models are out, so what do I think they should be called? Muppet models. And I should put my cards on the table here too. I'm a professor at the University of Maryland. And we have a strong connection to Muppets and Muppet models. From Kermit, the Muppet, not the language model, to Elmo, to Bert, there has been a Marylander with their hand in the Muppet. Link to a video talking about this history in more detail and uh, these great University of Maryland alumni in the description. And the model all in the news today, GPT, was supposed to be called Snuffleupagus. Big Bird's possibly imaginary friend, who is an elephant-like creature, until OpenAI chickened out. As an aside, a Muppet that is gigantic and that only a select few can see is a perfect name for a model about whom, open, AI isn't sharing anything about the architecture, hardware, compute, data set, or training. So why are Muppet models a good name for these models? I'm going to list a couple of reasons, focusing on the Muppet side, and hopefully the connection to the modeling side is fairly obvious. First, Muppets are fun, and as my irrefutable argument, I present the following to you. Menomena. And Muppet models are fun too. My favorite is the biblical instructions on how to remove a sandwich from a VCR. A conditional random field never made me laugh like this. Next, Muppets are interactive. X, Y, and Z. Now I know my ABCs. Next time, you. Cookie Monster. <laughs> Next time, Cookie Monster can do it with you. I'm leaving. Woo. I love you. I love you too. Thanks. <laughs> and a lot of us are having fun playing around with ChatGPT and U.com. And Muppets are interactive as well. Even if you start feeding nonsense into it, it will act like a good improv partner to say yes and and go along for the ride. And although they're not perfect, Muppets are multilingual and multicultural. They try to embrace new languages and cultures. Und hat die Lampe kaputt gemacht. Oh, Schorsch, ich glaube, Tiffy spricht nie wieder ein Wort mit mir. Oh. Samson, ich kann gut verstehen, dass sie sauer ist. Even though they Aber started in English, so created by University of Maryland alumni, I remind you, they can be adapted to other languages and cultures. But they're still pretty tied to their origins in the United States. And Muppets can be educational, speaking as someone who watched plenty of Sesame Street and Fraggle Rock as a kid. And they can be fairly reliable, especially when they're closely tied to a text. Like, say, Charles Dickens' A Christmas Carol. Mm, the Marleys were dead to begin with. Well, well, pardon me? That's how the story begins, Rizzo. The Marleys were dead to begin with. However, Muppets are not infallible. They can still make stuff up. Do you know this place? 
know it. My first job was here. This is Fuzzywig's old rubber chicken factory. Believe it or not, Dickens didn't actually write that line. And while it might be obvious if you know the underlying text well, there's not much about the presentation here that would tell you that this is something made up. But one thing that I really appreciate about Muppets is that they're a really technically sophisticated illusion. It's really impressive what it takes to get a Muppet to work. There's really clever engineering and artistry, and we shouldn't downplay that. But that doesn't mean that you're actually talking to a frog or a dog or a none of the above. Finally, Muppets are controlled by a large multinational corporation whose goals are not necessarily aligned with what you would like Muppets to do. And indeed, that's probably the best reason against calling them Muppet models. Who knows if Disney would be cool with it. I'm not an IP lawyer, but I think the ship has already sailed on that thanks to the extensive use of Elmo and Bert. So that's my vote for why things like Elmo, Bert, and Snuffleupagus, I mean GPT, should still be called Muppet models. Please join me. Because they're really cool and exciting, but we shouldn't take them 100% seriously. And if any billionaire out there with more money than sense wants to endow a center for Muppet models, my DMs are open. I think I'd make a good puppet. I mean Muppet. I mean spokesperson. This is just one video from a course that I'm teaching. If you want to get the whole context, check out the course webpage linked below. There you can find all of the videos in the right order. YouTube likes to show you older videos out of order, homeworks, exercises, and recommended readings. And if you want to help other people find videos like this, please be sure to like and subscribe to provide a big gradient to the algorithm.